welcome back to the fix it. Woo woo. The fix it. All right, so we're fixing this Honda today. It's, uh, So, it has a radiator leak. You can see it all over. big crack all the way down there wow it extends from here all the way over to there it's a pretty good size crack so we're just going to take this radiator out and put a new one in so first we're going to have to drain the radiator fluid out and then take these hoses off then we'll do the connectors for the fans and then just free these wires up then we'll be able to access the radiator so we just take this one and that one out those two bolts and these radiator mounts will pop off and then this bad boy will just slide right on out all right so here we go All right, so don't forget to um, take the negative off the battery so that the circuit isn't complete, so it doesn't really mess the computer up if something happens and gets grounded out while you're taking connections apart. It's always a good idea. You could take both of the battery terminals off if you wanted just to be safe. Might be a good idea. There we go, that way I can clean it off because it's pretty gunky. All right, so to get under there, there's a flap. A little skid plate. It's plastic, but we gotta move it or else we can't um, drain this bad boy. So, since this car is a Honda Accord and it's real low, we gotta lift it up. So you can find a jack like this, scissor jack. In the back of the car normally, in the trunk. Right in the side, like that. And you'll find your stuff there. Or a lot of times it's down on the ground through like a little door like this right on the bottom so all right so you want to take your scissor jack roll it out a little bit underneath normally driver's side right underneath behind the tire Normally right around here, underneath right here, you're gonna find a point in which you could set this jack and it's safe. If you just go put in this jack anywhere you want underneath here, you might bend the actual frame of the car, lifting itself, its own weight, on a point that's not supposed to have that much weight on it. So, normally cars are, the frames are built to spread the weight out evenly. So you're not really supposed to put a lot of weight in one point here. So right here, there is a little mount, like a brace. 
fits right into the frame that's completely safe and it's literally put there for you to jack up it fits right in this little groove on top you just set that in there and jack it on up And after you jack it up to the point in which you can reach the stuff underneath and slide under there, you're going to want to put a jack stand so that in case this fails, it's not going to smash you. Alright, so we're going to have to take all these guys off. There's a few missing already. Missing. That one's missing. Oh, that, that one's missing too. Well, most of them are missing. And that one's pretty messed up. I imagine when I take that out, it's just gonna fall apart. I have to use some zip ties to hold this all together once I'm done taking this piece off so that I can get to the radiator, which is right above it. To get these off, you could just use a flathead screwdriver and then like maybe a pair of needle nose. Just use your needle nose. Oh, oh that ain't working. Might need to get a bigger one. There it is. Oh, didn't fall apart. So yep, just keep going down and doing that until it comes off. All right, we moved it out of the way. And there's the bottom radiator hose. So we're just gonna 
take this clamp off right here, which is just a, one of the older, or just the regular squeeze clamps. You can just use um, a pair of pliers to squeeze it and slide it through. And then this will come off and we'll put the bucket underneath it to catch all the fluid. All right, so I couldn't get to the bottom radiator hose enough to get, actually get the clip off because it was hard to get the pliers in there, no room. So this is a nice feature that m most, almost all radiators have, especially nowadays. A little knob you can just twist to release the radiator fluid. Shot right over for a second. Ooh. All right. All right, so that is just about drained. I'm sure there's still a little in there. So now we're gonna take this upper radiator hose off, or at least just get it free. I need my other hand for this. So you just squeeze them these two bad boys together and then shake it back and forth and it'll slide where you need it to slide. You just let it go. And you want to twist it back and forth to break it free because normally they're always stuck on there really good. Then you just keep shaking and it'll come off. Be careful though because if it's an old hose it'll be really hard and crackly when you squeeze on it and so if you squeeze it too hard or move it too hard like that out of the way then the bend where it bends it'll just break then you're screwed got to get a new hose at that point this one seems to be okay actually still pliable so it'll be fine for a while Alright, so then we'll move this out of the way and we will unclip these. It's actually quite difficult. Uh, there we go. You just push this down and it pushes that little guide down so that it doesn't stay in there and it'll be free. Alright, now there's one more here. I don't feel the guide anywhere. Or the release button. There it is. At the back. So now these fans are just 
stuck to the radiator and not clipped into the hardware of the engine. This is just a clip. Should be able to pull this tab up and then this should be able to pop right out. But should and will is always interesting with cars. Pop that back closed so it doesn't break off. Well, broke off anyways. Oh no, it's a clip. Sweet. So I could just clip it back on there later. Just won't stay with that other piece out of the way. Okay, so this is connected right there. So I'm gonna take that off, just pulls right off. Just move it out of the way. You'll learn that every single thing on a car will fight with you no matter what. It's a nightmare, but whatever. You learn to deal with it. Now this is popped in down a little ways and I can't seem to unpop it. But it's the last piece that's holding this wire to the radiator and the radiator fans. So I imagine I could just lift the radiator up a little bit and get to it. So now I'm going to undo these two bolts so that the radiator will be free and loose. Take these out, you just pull it up and then pull it out so that the pin that holds it in place right here, the little tab, doesn't bend and break. Okay, so now it's free except for the end of this wire and the lower radiator hose. So I'm gonna lift it up a little bit, prop it on something, and then get the lower radiator hose, and then come back over here and get this wire. Then we'll take this bad boy out, then we'll have to take the fans off of this radiator and any other equipment that's on here and put it onto the next radiator before we put that radiator back in. Alright, so you can see that's a transmission line and there's two of them. One here and one out the side. You won't be able to see it with the camera. But I've been working at that one right there for like 30 minutes. It is so hard to get off, oh my lord. I finally got it to budge by pushing a flathead screwdriver underneath and around the outside of it right where you can see that it's all wet right there. I'm using two hands right now so I can't put my finger to show you. If I drop one hand, there goes the light. Oh, maybe you can still see. All right, so I got the last one out, finally. What a accomplishment that was. Good God, what a struggle. So now here's the last one. Transmission line. I have a bucket down there, but as the cookie crumbles, I imagine it's gonna leak all over the place anyways. That's how life goes.
Uh, come on, baby. Uh, woo, okay. Oh, it didn't leak all over the place. Good. Uh, move the wire out of the way. Well, shite. I ain't moving that one out of the way. Into there. Just gotta get this lower radiator ho hose out of here, which I couldn't get to before. Still can't get to, so I'm gonna figure that out, and then um, maybe try to lift this radiator up halfway, and then grab it out of there. All right, so <clears throat> I lifted the radiator up almost halfway, and. It wouldn't let me even get it to a place where I could get to the lower radiator hose, so I have to get it from below. I have no other choice. It's just going to be really tough. I'm going to have to like figure out a way to get something to move the little clip that releases around here, this piece is pointed in a direction where you can't get pliers in there to squeeze these two together so i might have to take like a flathead screwdriver and push it against one side and whatever i could find to scoot this around a little bit so i can get to it i'll be damn sure to i'll be sure to put this bad boy into a place that i can that someone else can get it off when I put it back in. Okay, so we finally got the little squeeze joint radiator hose clamp from the bottom of the lower radiator hose free from its location so that the hose will come loose. And let me just tell you, I've worked on at least a hundred radiators before in my life. And um, taking them out and putting them in, doing whatever I can to keep them going as long as I can without having to buy a new one kind of thing. And this is the hardest one I've ever taken out. And only because the clips, these stupid freaking clips, these clips are so dumb. Just whenever you can, folks, take these stupid clips off and put the regular ones on that you could adjust. The hose clamps, like... Like these guys. Regular hose clamps. Because then you could actually get to them and take them off. The bottom one was actually... This piece was spun around up against something and then there was something below it as well like a line so I couldn't get anything in there to get the clip out and there was nothing I could do so I literally almost had to make something to just pull this downward from up around it to just kind of squeeze it the best I could and then eventually I got it to turn around enough to where I could get pliers in there and loosen it on the bottom, this hose. Okay, so now we just gotta wiggle it free down here. Just keep, it sucks that you can't, I can't point to it because my hand gets in the light and then you can't see it anymore, so. Uh, you can't see it anymore, okay, right there. So we just gotta pull that puppy dog out of there. It's gonna be pretty tough, but um, I'll get it. Then this will be free. All right, so I finally got that. A lot of words that I'd like to say right now that aren't very nice words. I'd be super angry about how tough that was to get off when a job like this normally takes like no more than an hour 
Hell, not even that long sometimes. This took me like forever only because of these stupid clips and the hose is just not coming off. But now they're all free, so we're just gonna take this up, just pull it straight up, and it'll come right out of there. All right, so there it is, taken out. In all its glory. go ahead and clean that stuff out real quick so that way I could be ready to put the next one in. Okay, so here's how it looks right now. I sprayed some degreaser and stuff on it. show you after I wipe it all down all right so I went ahead and wiped all everything basically off in here cleaned it all off So no more evidence that um, it was leaking. No more spray all over everything. All right, so now to get the other, the new radiator ready to put in. All right, so now we just need a new radiator that hopefully is the same as that one. Bam. Sweet. Talk about airmail. All right, let's open it up and hopefully it's the same one that we need. All right, folks. So, now we have this old radiator laying down flat on its back. That's how you're gonna wanna do this. Just lay it down. And then you have your new radiator up off the ground on like a box that it came in. Most likely you'll have the box it came in. So just set it on there. Because if you touch this on the ground or something touches one of these fins, the fins will bend out of the way or break or bust or whatever and then leaves a place for stuff to get stuck in and then boom, bye bye radiator eventually. So let's not do that safe on this box and now we're going to start taking these pieces off to transform to this one here so for that we have three quarter which is going to take off these fittings here and there and then we have a 10 which will take off this bracket all the bolts on this bracket here that one and that one there's two so we'll need the bracket these two fittings which it comes with when you buy it and then these fan shrouds and it looks like that's it so here we go okay so basically just tighten this bad boy on there until it's tight. 
and then give it another quarter turn to make sure it's extra tight so it doesn't leak under pressure. And then just turn the valve the same direction as the valve is on the other one. So that valve was like right there. So this valve will tighten it a little bit more. I need my hand so one sec. Alright, there it is. So the way that this one was. Alright, so then we're gonna go ahead and take this cap off. Just twist it for a little bit and then it pops off. Don't need it. We're gonna go ahead and put this piece on. Oh shit, it's pouring all over the place. So I'm gonna go ahead and empty this out a little bit more because it's filled up with oil, transmission fluid. And then, um. Then we're just gonna put it on there. Okay, so I just set it on there and then tighten this up a little bit. I'm not uh, fully tightening it yet because we're going to want to line up these two bolt holes. That one and this one here. So let's put bolts in there, in there first and then we'll tighten that up at the end. All right, when you're tightening these two bolts, you don't want to get it tighter than just like that, you know? Because this bar isn't moving anywhere. It's not going to be shaking around too much. The pieces that it's screwing into are plastic, so they'll just break. And, um, yeah, so basically that's it. Just tighten those two, just real easy tighten. It doesn't have to be super, super tight. You don't want to break the, the mount. And then we'll now tighten this. So now it's, we'll see that it's tight there. Now you're going to want to give it that quarter turn extra to make sure that it's not going to come free and the juice stays in there. There we go. However, this pin changed direction pretty good and it's pulling on this piece so we're going to have to loosen it up and work that out. Okay, so right here what you're going to want to do to get this pointed the right direction and be able to tighten it all the way without it turning completely over here the more you tighten it is you want to loosen it up, twist this over here against the direction that it's going to go on its own when you tighten it and then you tighten it nice and snug let go and tighten it the rest of the way like that done see and then now it's now it's tight enough and it's in the right direction any other way you do that it's not gonna end up right here it's gonna end up over here or over there so now you know. Okay, so now we're taking the fans off. We're to that point now. So we just got to take one, two, three, four, five, and that's it. This one has two little pop joints that those little guys just pop into the joint and holds it in place on this side while these are the side while this is the side that you need to screw it down at. So we just take these two and this one will come off. This one has three to get it off. So let's go ahead and do that now. It's gonna be, uh, I believe it's gonna be a 10. Yeah, it's a 10. All right, we've looped. All right, so since this back side, the lower side, is the slide joints, and those sides are the ones that you gotta unscrew all the way and take them out. Right here, I'm just gonna go ahead and take this off. 
take it out and we're just gonna put it right where it goes just loosely tighten it in there not fully tighten and now we'll take out these guys and then we'll just pick it up and then slide it out just stick it on here well we could check the inside real quick to make sure it's all right yeah it's fine Yeah, it's fine. Okay, so just set it in place carefully, not to scratch the radiator. Okay. All right. So then just get that in there. Oop, slides right in. So now you just finger tighten that for now. Now for the next one. Carefully set the other side down. There we go. And you could maneuver the back into the little guide holes and then slide it in place. There we go. Okay, now just Go ahead and tighten all those bolts down. Those two, five, those five bolts there, just tighten them down. And then we'll move forward. Okay, so we've tightened all those bolts and remember not to tighten these very tight, okay? You just get them snug and then give it a little quarter turn more because this is also plastic that it's screwing into and this piece here is plastic as well. So this will snap right off if you tighten that too tight. It'll just break off. Then you're screwed. So let's not do that. So now that we got that done, now this radiator is ready to just slide in there. And this is what it now looks like. This old radiator without all the parts on it. So we can just go ahead and... There's a radiator core deposit that you get for returning a radiator, a used radiator. So... I'm gonna talk to the owner of this car who bought this radiator and see where they bought it from so that I can go turn this back in and get that that um, chump change, maybe even give it to the person or tell them about it if they want it. It's probably gonna be uh, five to 15 bucks. A battery's like 15 bucks, so this is probably like five or 10 bucks. All right, so let's put it back in the car now. All right, so just about ready to pick that up and stick it in the car, but look at this. Now, I don't know, well, obviously it's a spring. Clearly it's a spring, but I pulled it out of here inside the old radiator. It was inside of it. Why would this spring be inside of a radiator? What could have that came from? If anyone knows, please put it in the comments. Thank you very much. Never seen a spring inside of a radiator before. So, yeah, if you know what that could be from, please go ahead and put that in the comments, for real. Go. Alright, so we're going to put this in there. And we're not going to touch the back of the fins. We're not going to touch the back of these fins on on this piece, okay? So just be very careful. There's a groove that this literally sets in and slides in, down in so that the back doesn't get messed up. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so we're just going to move these out of the way and this piece here wants to get stuck on everything 
it's a nightmare. So here we go. It's not gonna be easy. one side at a time slowly so you don't break anything and once you get it in the slots it should just start sliding freely good lord this one this car just fights you fights you to the very bitter end every single inch in fighting never had this happen before actually 90% of cars you just take it right out and put it right in bada bing bada boom there now it's in and you kind of want to slide it back and forth this way and that way just a little bit while pulling up on the side with your fingers Kind of like that, so you can feel that it's in the right groove, the right slot. There. See, now it doesn't want to slide back and forth. It's in the right slot. So, now we're good. We can just start connecting all the hoses and everything. But first, we're going to want to connect this hose, or, or the clamp. These two clamps, radiator mounts. Let's go ahead and put those on first. Alright, so remember these guys have the uh, pin that you want to slide in the groove. So, take the bolt out, put the pin in the little groove, not the one that it screws, the bolt screws into, and then it drops down. Then you can just set the bolt in there and give it a thread or two, go to the other side. Put the bolt in your hand, put the pin in the slot. Let it fall, bolt in, one or two threads. Now. You can just squeeze this against the back here, and then those fall in place. Make sure they're on there nicely. And you're screwing the bolt in all the way. You don't have to tighten it yet. Just screw it in finger tight. that we're gonna need to slide in all the way on the side, which you won't be able to see. So I'm just gonna do that real quick first before we get the top ones. Okay, so we got the side in there now, and we're just gonna pop these two in place, and then after that, we'll put this where it goes. So first, we'll go ahead and get the far one. Pop it in. Well, we can make sure the connections are good. All cleared out. That one's not dirty. Just pop it in. Clip. You'll hear the pop when it goes in all the way. Okay, now this one. Just want to pop it 
right in. Boom, done. Now here's this piece here. It goes right in the fan, right here, in that little groove. So you just, boom, done. In, okay? So now your radiator is in. There's two transmission lines, one on the side over here, right down this groove right here. And then one on the very bottom next to the lower radiator hose, which I'll show you when we get down there. So now that we're done up here, let's go ahead and put this upper radiator hose back on. Just pop it in place, bada bing. Oh, wait. This one goes below it. There we go. Now let's put this one on. This little guy here clips into the square hole. Done. This guy comes over here and sets on there with a little poppy thing. Let me see if I can find that poppy thing. Okay, so I found the little piece and it just goes on here and it just pops in place. Boom. Just like that. And then that's on there. Okay. Cool. Okay, so here was the um, reservoir tube, a breather tube, also an overflow tube at the same time goes straight into the coolant reservoir. So you're gonna wanna pop that in there, bring it up through here, and wipe it off. Slide it in there, done. Okay, so now this piece, you wanna take something like this, adjust them out a little bit. So you got something like that. And then squeeze them together. And then rock it all the way into place. Leave it so you can get it later with the pliers. Point it in a direction that you could actually grab it. See, from there I can go here and I could grab it. If I push this underneath, you're never gonna get it out. So, just know that, especially when you're doing the lower radiator hose. That's That was my problem earlier. Someone had spun it the opposite direction and I could never get to it. All right, so we got all the hoses all put together in there and um, wiped this all down. So now we gotta put the skid plate back in place and pop it back in with those little <sighs> whatever you want to call those things I don't even know what these are called to be honest but yeah you just pop the end in and then push this piece like that and then you're good It's a little difficult, but um, I mean, it's honestly really not that hard. You just push this in there and then push that in and you're done. Well, however, what you can't see is that it's not lining up to that hole underneath. 
so I can't get this stupid thing in there. Oh my gosh, this car. It's this piece that doesn't line up. The back does, but the front one doesn't. The bumper must just be out of line or something. Oh boy, this is gonna be a nightmare. Okay, so I got it. Good to go. And the one last one. just three joints and there's nothing that it bolts into after that so they just all clip together these three pieces good luck getting those in line let's just start shoving this through one at a time All right, so, darn it, lighting. So, um, the little popper wouldn't fit in there because the hole's gotten a lot bigger. So, there was a place that was missing one right there. see it but it's there there now you can see it I put it in there and now this is way stronger back there because it was all this piece was falling off so that's good I'm glad I put it there instead however this is important because three pieces come together right here so something's got to go in there. So you're not defeated. All you need to do is take a zip tie and just, for some reason I can't see it. Here we go. Put it in there. Oh boy. Need two hands, but you'll put it in there pull it out through here and then zip it together okay so I got it through there and just tighten that bad boy up real nice and tight there you go now it's good it ain't coming off Strong. Good to go. So, yep. There's one more missing right here. So I'll just put a zip tie in there too. And then we're good to go. So don't forget to tighten these. I already tightened them up. This is all in place. This is all good. Now we're gonna fill it up. All right, as angry as I am, I put fluid in it and you can see it squirting out right there, which means that this stupid clamp isn't even working. So we're gonna have to take it off again and put something like this in there so it actually works. Stupid machinery. Okay, so finally, after I took that upper radiator hose 
off for two seconds to put that on. It leaked radiator fluid all over down there, even if for that split second. So all the work cleaning all that stuff out was pretty much pointless because I had to do it all over again. And this time the radiator was in the way. So it's not gonna look very good. Still kind of looks damp, but it's just because of that, all that oily stuff from the radiator fluid. mounted back in place so that moisture and stuff doesn't get in there. This one's all clean and good to go. Okay, we're gonna and give it a start. We'll check the oil first. Looks like it's full, so no big deal. Check the transmission fluid, because we did lose a little oil from there. All right, one thing I want to tell you, see those leaves? So there's a, a wind windshield wiper motor in here and a washer fluid motor in here, normally. So if you have leaves up there, then these leaves grind up and they fall in there. The pieces fall in and then get wet when it rains and then boom, your car's on fire and all this will burn. So make sure you always take the leaves out of here. Don't ever leave leaves up in here, ever. All right, so I found the dipstick. There it is right there. Let's see. Nope, okay. So, there's the dipstick for the transmission. I pulled it and looked at it. It was a little low because some of the fluid looked, you know, came out the bottom of those hoses that I took off. And then I put it, so I filled it back up with enough fluid and then put it back in. And, um, here we are. All good. No more leaks. All right, so thanks for watching another Fix It. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell if you want a notification when I put my next video out. Put a like if you like it. You can, don't forget to comment if you want to comment on it. Let me know what you think about something or if you have a question, be happy to answer it. Much love.